Hello YouTube, it's your girl Keisha and Laundry and I'm back with another video. I said I'm back with another video. How's everybody doing out there? Y'all, it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm up and I'm sure I'll be up until, you know, past dawn. So, um, this is how, this is my crazy sleeping schedule when I have off. So, um, before Jamia left, she went and got some Kentucky Fried Chicken. So, I asked her to pick me some up. So that when I did wake up, I can eat. I knew I would wake up like in the middle of the night hungry or in the middle of the morning hungry. And I did. So I had to get me a three piece for biscuit. Yeah, I heard that Kentucky Fried Chicken chicken is frozen. Um, God freeze them. What is it? 17 spices? 21 spices? Who knows? God freeze them spices to get them to marinate, I guess. So she said it was out of coleslaw. I'm telling y'all, Kentucky Fried Chicken got the best coleslaw on the market. They really do. My mom used to make her own coleslaw. Well, my family, they make their own coleslaw. Grind up the the cabbage and the um carrots. That's how I can remember from when I was younger. I just recently asked my sister if she had our grandmom's apple cobbler recipe. Because... I've been craving it. My grandma also used to make something called, um, what we called the hoagie salad. And when I got down here, I seen it in the grocery store. I seen it in Harvey's. And it's called anti-pasta salad. I said, no way. When I seen it, I was like, that looked like my grandma's salad she used to make. But she used to call it hoagie salad. You know, a hoagie is like a sub if you're from down south. And um, I, when I taste it. It was, it was my grandma's salad. I said, no way. I thought she made that up. Uh, I thought my grandma made up a um, hoagie salad. You know what else I've been craving that she used to give us? That on liverwurst. I, how you say liverwurst or liverwurst? I don't know. But she put that stuff on the cracker, like pate. <laughs> It'd be so good. And sometimes I crave the stuff that I had as a child. My grandma even used to make watermelon salad. I mean, watermelon juice. And sun tea. She would let the tea bags sit in the window. And the sun would cook the, the water in the tea. And she called it sun tea. It would make its own tea from sitting in the sun. Then she would add sugar and call it sun tea. <laughs> My grandma. I'm thinking about her a lot tonight, huh? I got so... Yeah. Did y'all hear that um the Korean leader Kim Jong un is gravely ill? And I say excuse me, that's what kind of God we serve. That is what kind of God we serve. That man is young. That man is young. But did too much dirt. Now he got to go get in it permanently. It's crazy, ain't it? Crazy how things happen. But my mom always said, you don't have to take care of them. God will take care of them. And throughout life, I've seen that to be right. It's so true. For, I guess another grandma story. We lived in a neighborhood. Like like how my kids is growing up in a neighborhood. Not an apartment complex. No diss to people who, move, who live in an apartment complex. But... Um, we grew up in a neighborhood where it was people sitting on their porch. You know, the neighbor, you can yell at them across the street. Cars ride by and beep. Corner store at the corner. Corner store around the corner. Kids playing. Neighbors know each other. It, it was just um, a really great neighborhood to grow up in. But, um, it was this man named Mr. Tim <laughs> who used to live across the street. His mom owned um, a big house on the corner, so the side... Like, our street was like this, and then the side of their house was across the street on the corner, but then the other houses faced our street, if you get what I'm saying. Because it was a, like, it was a, um, a car street right here, so their house sat on the front of that car street, and then you turn the corner, and then that's 11th Street, the street I grew up on. And Mr. Tim, he used a fire escape to get to, his mom gave him the upstairs apartment to the house because it was so huge so the upstairs apartment was like on the second or third floor and um mr tim he um 
<laughs> he used to, um, he was like a cross dresser and things like that. But everybody loved Mr. Tim. But, um, I guess he had it out with my family one day. And one day me and my cousin Gina was young. Me and my cousin Gina was playing with balloons. So we was all out on the porch, you know, had them in our boobs and doing like this. And Mr. Tim was steady trying to, um, you know, correct us as, as an adult should. And me and Gina started mouthing back off to him because we knew that our family, you know how kids are, we manipulate the situation. So we knew our family was like mad at Mr. Tim at the time because back then you could be mad at the neighbor and then they get over it. You know, so we would be mad at, <laughs> they was mad at Mr. Tim, so me and Gina was mouthing them off while we had the balloons in our, um, in our shirt. Man, do you know that man gonna say, you gonna be a, you gonna be a whore. <laughs> we, oh, that was all we needed. That's all we needed. <laughs> he told us we was gonna be whores. Just from putting balloons in our shirts, man. I don't know what's wrong with adults because now even when I see Faith doing that, she put it in her belly. You know, I'm pretending that the balloon is a um is a baby. And I remember back then, you know, parents wouldn't let you do stuff like that. They felt like you was being too grown. But that's them realizing that they're a woman and they have the power to give birth. That's the most powerful thing you can do on earth. It's no one else in on this earth that have that much power besides a woman. Like we give birth. We birth the nation. We birth the world. You know. But um but yeah. Oh, and I got a I guess I got another dog story. So around that corner that I was talking about, same street that Mr. Tim House faced on the opposite side, um, it was a drunk named Mr. Samson. So Samson, he was married to an albino named Miss Terry. Man, Miss Terry hair was so thick and red. Oh my God. It looked like a Brillo pad. But um Miss Terry was an albino and she was married to Samson, who was like a real bad drunk. Samson had a dog named Midnight. Of course it was black. So, um, you know, we had the, the, um, the dealers for lack of better words, we had the dealers in our neighborhood and, um, <laughs> Mo Myers, I'm going to just say his street name, Mo Myers would come riding through with his little Oldsmobile, you know, um, bumping the music and stuff like that. So one night he hit and Mo Myers hit and killed Samson dog, man. When I tell y'all Samson loved that dog midnight, midnight. If Samson is like a book. If you've seen a black man walking, straggly looking black man walking, um, with a little black dog on the side of him, dog just wagging his tail. The dog loves Samson and the, and um and Samson loved the dog. Well, Mo, why Mo Myers run that man dog over one day, right at the corner in the intersection that I'm talking about, right at that corner. Sat midnight. Midnight dead as I don't know what on the corner. So Man, me and my friend Trina seen that at the time. Trina was the friend I played with every day that lived across the street from me. Man, and Trina was one of them big kids that looked bigger than what she what she was for her age. But um, man, Samson came home drunk. When I tell y'all, he picked that dog up. He cried so hard. I was young and I can still remember his hard cry. He was trying to get Midnight up. It was so sad. It was so sad. He took Midnight in the house. Midnight was like crushed, but he did not leave Midnight in the middle of the street. He cried so hard for that dog. So uh, Mischief Night was coming up. I think that's why I was so sensitive about the dog that got ran over up the street in my neighborhood the other day. So um, Mischief Night was coming up. So me and Trina went and we rode on Mo Meyer's car. <laughs> <laughs> dog killer and rough rough we wrote it all on the car with soap as you know with white soap i don't know if it's still doing but that's how we used to do things on um mischief night if we wanted to write on somebody's car we would use soap and um they could just get it right you know it just wash right off but the white soap it was like ivory i think and you just write on it and the words show up so we wrote dog killer and rough rough do you know that fool <laughs> my is crazy i think he knew we did it because he came riding down our street the next day and me and trina looked at each other like oh my god <laughs> but um when we got older i had told mo myers that me and trina is the one who did that to his um to his dog because uh fun fact mo myers was like probably 10 years older than me but he wound up marrying some girl in high school you know on some old robber kind of stuff 
but um he married the girl in high school her mom gave him permission and everything she was a she was a little girl we weren't even we weren't even seniors so that grown man had his butt at the prom it's crazy but that's how things was back in the day them old heads used to ride past the school or come post up outside the school with their nice cars and stuff like that just seeing what young girl they can get you know crazy but I feel like I enjoyed the time that I grew up. I don't, I wouldn't want to grow up in these kind of times. I mean, all the dangers. I mean, from just street danger to, you know, not being knowledgeable of things that can hurt you. You know, these kids, they got all kinds of drugs. Back then, we had, like, weed. And we knew, like, the um people who was on drugs. We would never even think to do some, some drugs, you know. But... You know, we would just, like, sneak some beer or something like that. But these kids today, they got the pressure of, like, them prescription pills and things like that. Like, opioids. Like, what the heck? Opioids? Not really. Just all the way in the medicine cabinet, huh? Just digging all in, in your grandma's medicine bag. Grandma can't even keep her medicine bag on the side of the couch no more. On the side of her bed. Grandma got them. Got to have a whole lot of tea for her, um, her medicine. Let me tell you. My cousin Ernest reached out to me last week. He was, um, my cousin Gina's son. Excuse me. My cousin Gina passed away when we was younger. She had a tumor in the back of her neck, but she had two kids that was young when she passed away. And, um, her birthday was the 21st. And he contacted me probably about three or four days before her birthday that weekend. And he said he had had a, he had a dream about me. And I was like, yeah, it's Gina. <laughs> Gina birthday coming up. And Gina was thick as thieves. Thick as thieves. Ma'am. I got some of just reminiscing. There was a girl named Deborah that used to live around the corner. But she wanted to be our friend so bad. So we would get her to come in our backyard and we would beat her up. I don't know why, but we would beat her up and she would run out crying. And this girl would fall for it like we I, we bullied her. It's a shame because all she wanted was friends. And she didn't dress that nice. And her mom was real big. Her mom named... um was Philomena, so she was like one of them big, tall, big ladies that shaped like um the Despicable Me Man, but she was a woman. But Philomena kept her hair fly, had a car, kept her kids clean. I'm going to say that about Philomena. But the board just wanted friends, and they got teased a lot. Um, you know, Gina will be like, we'll be your friend. And she'll fall for it every time. Every time. That's why I be scared for Faith sometimes when she go outside. She got these two sisters that she play with. Chanel and Lala, and sometimes when she come in, but you know, karma, karma is a live entity. Sometimes she'll come in and say, you know, that one of them did something to her, and I'll sit her down and tell her, you know, you don't have to play with nobody who's treating you bad, you know, you don't. But I know I got that karma coming. I got it coming. Unless it happened with my daughter. Mm -hmm. So, am I the only one whose sleep pattern is off? Am I? Like, just way y'all. Mm. It's crazy because it seems like everybody on YouTube is talking about the same thing. Like, I understand they're talking about current events, but there's so many other things that happened in your life. That's ha You know, that happened in your life, that's happening in your life that you could talk about. Everything don't have to be, you know, Lori Harvey or... Um, what's everybody talking about? Just, just, um, I guess the versus battle. Like, everybody is talking about the same thing. It's tiresome. It really is. But, yeah. My son was telling me how, um, you know, he worked at one of the local McDonald's, and he was telling me today how, because he did a turnaround last night. Last night, he got off, well, the night before last. He got off like around 11, 12 o'clock, and he had to go right back to work at 8 o'clock. So he did a turnaround yesterday. So he worked on Saturday. He worked like 8 o'clock to 4. But he was telling me how 
a homeless, excuse me, a homeless man had um, walked up to the drive through and, you know, was just being mad, disrespectful. He probably had mental issues and um, he urinated and my son got a little bit out the way and I was telling him, you don't, you know, first of all, that's McDonald's stuff. You don't have to protect it. I Don't be one of them family dollar employees that's protecting something that's not yours, you know, but, um, but I told, you know, I just talked to him about things like that because you can't, you can't just um, argue with customers. It don't matter if they mentally ill. It don't matter if they homeless or whatever. You don't get out of the way with them. You see them for what they are and you walk away, you know, because God wouldn't favor nothing like that, you know, because we're all his children. And um, the ones that's not all the way there are extra protected by, are extra protected by our Lord. That's, that's just on everything. So I, I had to talk to him about that because it's a, a big homeless population where he is, where he's working. And so that won't be the last time that he come in contact with somebody who's not all the way there. And I just want him to know how to handle it because it's, it's just not worth it. And then, you know, some jobs, if you get too far out the way, then you lost your job and you was protecting that stuff. It's just no way you look at it. Is it worth it? Now, if somebody came to our front door and you was protecting our family, then yeah, by any means necessary. You know. Yeah. I was telling my coworker that I might want to get a pow bang. I might want to get a pow bang. And he told me that I really didn't need a license, but we'll see because he's a security guard. He told me that I didn't really need a license, that if I brought it off of him, then I wouldn't need a license for it. He would just have to give me a bill of sale saying that he sold it to me. I got to look that up because I know in Pennsylvania, you need a license. He said the only way I need a license is if I get it from a gun store. I don't know. Y'all know Florida is, <coughs> Florida is shaped like a bang, pow, bang. So I don't know. Then you know what else he told me? A fun fact. He used to work on death row at one of the um prisons down here. And he told me that in Dizani water, Dizani water, they put an ingredient that they use for lethal injections. It's called magnesium something. But they he explained to me that Dizani is made by Coke, Coke products. So if you go somewhere to a big event, you'll see Coke and they'll only have Dizani. Now this magnesium something is designed to keep you thirsty. So you'll keep on coming back buying the, buying the water or buying a Coke. It's called magnesium something. If you read the back of Dizani water, you'll see it there. But it's an ingredient that is in that they put in the lethal injections. Ugh. I mean, come on, FDA. You can't even trust the FDA. They approve this stuff. But me or my family will never be drinking Dizani again. I already didn't, never allowed them to drink Mountain Dew. It just looked like a drug commercial. You ever see the Mountain Dew commercials? I since she was little. The person drank Mountain Dew and didn't jump off a cliff. Drink Mountain Dew and didn't jump out of a helicopter. I'm like, I, what's so appealing? What's so appealing about that? So I never allowed my children to drink Mountain Dew. I think Jamia told me that she snuck and drank it when she was in high school and her friends was looking at her like she was crazy because she was like, she wasn't allowed to drink it. And I mean, why? That's, that's not appealing at all. But I'm about to get off of here and see what's happening on the news. I truly wish you all love, peace, and prosperity. Thank you for watching my video.